In my years of commenting on things religious, I've become accustomed to uh, some radical opinions being expressed. There's something about religion that brings out the extremists in uh, both its advocates and opponents. So usually when I read some kind of wild-eyed thing in uh, you know, the newspaper or on the internet, it kind of rolls off my back. But occasionally I'll, I'll read something that just uh, takes me aback, that makes me sit up and take notice. And this happened to me twice last Sunday when I read articles in the two major uh, papers of my hometown. The first one was uh, in the Chicago Sun-Times, and the columnist in question was Neil Steinberg, a writer who's made his uh, antipathy toward religion pretty clear throughout the years. He was commenting on the recent Obama administration decision to basically impose as a uniform law that all um, insurance programs have to include provisions for sterilization, contraception, and in some cases, even abortifacient drugs. And the law will dictate that Catholic institutions, which hold these things to be morally repugnant, have to comply. Uh, the U.S. bishops objected to this, as you would imagine. And um, to my infinite surprise, though, Neil Steinberg took this as an occasion to complain about the Catholic Church imposing its views on the rest of the country. Now, I know that's part of the standard sort of uh, liberal take on things, but in this case, come on, are you kidding? In fact, it's just the opposite. It's not as though Catholics are trying to dictate terms to the rest of the country. What they're objecting to is the imposition by the secular state of things that are repugnant to uh, Catholic morality. We're not trying to, to legislate against contraception. We're objecting to the imposition of this uh, demand to provide for contraception on the part of the uh, liberal state. Um, to me, it's just fascinating how people can miss that point that the oppression, see, it's just part of the old way of telling the story. The oppression is always coming from religion, when in fact today it's coming from the opposite direction. It's coming from a kind of overweening um, secular state. A particularly chilling uh, example of this was a statement made by uh, Kathleen Sebelius, who is the Health and Human Services Secretary for the Obama administration, a Catholic, by the way. And she said that, um, as kind of throwing a bone to Catholics who might be upset by this, that she's willing to give them a year to adjust to the new regulations. <laughs> well, as Cardinal designate uh, Timothy Dolan put it, I think rather aptly, she's basically saying to Catholics, well, you've got a year to figure out how to violate your consciences. Um, I mean, where's the oppression coming from here? Who's trying to use the law to impose morality on people? It ain't the Catholic Church, it's the secular state. Well, that was Steinberg's article, and then I turned to the Chicago Tribune, the other major paper in my hometown, and I saw on the editorial page an article by Sarah Paretsky, who's a mystery writer, but she's chiming in now on the similar you know, uh, issue. And the article was entitled, Our Bodies, Our Fertility. So you kind of get a sense from that what she's going to be saying. She had the same confusion that Steinberg had, namely that somehow the bishop's resistance to the Obama administration represents Catholic imperialism. So she had that. But there's something even, even stranger, stronger, uh, more, more puzzling. Namely that somehow women's sexuality is an arena that ought to be free of any legal constraint whatsoever. It's just a law-free zone. And I want to read you something directly from the article She's commenting on the Roe v. Wade decision, the 40th anniversary of which is, is next year. Um, she quotes um, or refers to Justice Brennan, who formulated the opinion. She says, Justice Brennan believed, as I believe, that women are full citizens and moral agents. Well, I have no quote with that, but listen now. Able to make decisions without a father, a church, or a legislator telling us what to do. Later on, a few lines later, she laments, how can bishops, legislatures, or judges claim the right to decide how each woman should react to her own unique situation? Well, now, if that strikes you as the, the petulance of a child, you're absolutely right. See, the point is, human life in all its dimensions, think of, of economics, of, of politics, of business, even sports, right, are planted thick with laws. Is oppression? No, because the consensus of the human race over many millennia, over countless generations is, these are areas of life that matter for human flourishing. And therefore, they have to be structured. They have to be directed. So you got a young kid, a teenage driver, that says, I want to drive 120 miles an hour. That road should be just a legal free zone. Well, no, of course, the law intervenes to say, drive 55. 
or a group of business people get together and say, well, let's, let's fix prices and establish a monopoly. Well, no, thank God the, the uh, country has antitrust laws against that. Um, someone says, I want to take full advantage of the benefits of society without paying taxes. Well, we have laws against tax evasion, etc. All these are, are ways of limiting, directing, and ordering areas of life where human flourishing uh, is at stake. Well, I mean, let's face it, one of those areas is, um, is sexuality. Um, what Paretsky's advocating is a sort of radical antinomianism. There should be no law, no outside force uh, dictating terms. Women's sexuality should be so free that even if a judge or legislator or church person were to say, I don't think you have a right to kill the child in your womb, even that's ruled out. That's too much intervention. That's too much law governing this area that ought to be utterly free. Here's another quote uh, from her article. They, and here she means moral and political authorities, see themselves as game wardens and women as alligators on the loose in the swamp. How do we teach them that women are just as human, just as capable of making their own choices as men? Well, I mean, come on. (laughs) In no area of life that we take seriously would we ever say, it's just up to you. It's simply your choice. Thank God. I mean, in no area of life do we say that there are no legal restraints. Thank God. To characterize lawmakers or judges or religious people as game wardens who are trying to, to limit the movement of animals, I mean, it's, it's simply a, an invitation to chaos. And to announce um, any area of life, especially sexuality, as an area that's free from legal uh, restraint is also an invitation uh, to chaos. What struck me in both Steinberg's and Presky's articles, real clear, I could quote you things if I had time, who's the enemy of their perspective? The Catholic Church. See, but I take that as a a backhanded compliment because I do think that um, liberal totalitarians, and that's what we're talking about, is a kind of liberalism that wants a totalizing control over life. I think liberal totalitarians rightly uh, infer that the great opponent to their point of view is the Catholic Church, for which I say thank God.